to my channel. Well, hello, dear Libra friends, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to talk about October's astrology uh, with special attention to that solar eclipse in the sign of Scorpio. So how are you going to be affected? Which area of your life is going to be influenced by that karmic influence? So if you want to know how to deal with that fated karmic energy, make sure you stay around till the end of this video because I have a tip you definitely don't want to miss out on. So dear Libra, the sun is going to be uh, with Venus moving around and illuminating your first house of self, your first house of appearance and general life path. Well, this is a lovely influence, needless to say, probably you've guessed it already. Uh, sun illuminating your first house, uh, issues surrounding personal identity, appearance and self-expression are going to be in forefront. So this is going to be the height of your physical cycle for the next 12 months to come. So you are in a position because of that to make a beautiful impression on others uh, with your radiance. You can assert your personal influence beyond its normal boundaries. Now you are ready to put the past behind you and start a brand new personal cycle. You have this spontaneity of expression, a presence uh, that projects confidence. So take good advantage of that. Now you can get in touch with your true sense of identity and the most enterprising side of you become very, very visible. You will be on the spotlight, needless to say, and your ability to shine, your ability to lead is going to be very, very visible. Now, Venus uh, in the first house will help you make any sort of improvement in your appearance. So anything to do with that, this is the time to do it in October. Especially needless to say, Venus loves to be in a Libra. Venus is a ruling Libra, so that's her best position to be. So anything you are going to do now in October with regards to your appearance it will definitely benefit you in terms of beauty, for sure. Now, other people will find you very cooperative beyond beauty, even if we are not focusing so much on, on you know, superficial things such as outside beauty nowadays. Uh, but uh, you can be very agreeable, very cooperative, and generally people want to be around you because that's just the influence of Venus in the first house. Uh, now, Venus rules your eighth house of money. So that means that other people's money can come to you in form of taxes, inheritances, investments, loans, debts, um, you know, maintenance, alimony, and these sort of things. Money that you didn't have to work for. So, you know, take good advantage of that. Now, in the beginning of the month, however, Venus is going to form an opposition to Jupiter. That's the 1st of October. And this can bring some excess, some excess in loving part in indulging. Now, so long as you can afford the time and the money to do so, it's no problem with it at all. If you are planning your yearly holiday around that time, fantastic. You will have a a fantastic time relaxing, making lots of friends, perhaps even lovers, and indulging in the goodness, essential goodness and material goodness of life as well. However, if you are about to uh, do some work um, or you have to do an exam, probably this time is going to be a little bit tricky for you because uh, because of that laziness that, um, you know, these aspects suggest when we don't really want to work, we just want to have a good time. So Mercury is in your first house, turning direct, opposing Jupiter in the seventh. And I did talk about that on my Mercury retrograde video. Please do check that out. Um, Basically, Mercury uh, opposing Jupiter can suggest that you express yourself with that jaunty overconfidence. And this, of course, can be interpreted as a little bit of arrogance. Uh, so watch that tendency. Um, you don't want to alienate any of your supporters because you love to cooperate. Dear Libra, I know that. You might sleep, uh, sleep over a task, however, because you didn't pay attention to a detail or because of impracticality or because because you judged a situation way too 
optimistically. And so this will play out in your first and seventh house axis, and that's the relationship axis. So that's the place where it could have been some overindulgence, some overly optimistic attitude, or maybe that jaunty overconfidence, uh, you know, that expression of yourself, or where you haven't judged the situation quite correctly. And you had to go back to, to resolve that good couple of times during the Mercury retrograde. But by the last hit, which is going to be the 12th of October, things will have smoothened out and things will have, uh, you know, sorted themselves out as well. So that's actually uh, good news uh, by the 12th of October. So, but regardless, there probably would have been, um, you know, some times of growth, stress, and some, you know, some aspect of overwhelm. Now, on the 12th and the 14th, Sun and Venus is going to try and Saturn. Now, Sun and Venus still in your first house and Venus in your fifth. So these two areas, fifth is uh, your children, your creative self-expression. First house is you, yourself, your physical appearance. And uh, these two are very good houses to, you know, to align. Uh, fifth house is a very inspirational house. So when it the two planets and two lovely planets such as Venus and Sun that project warmth and confidence and, and uh, beauty, uh, when they align to Saturn, uh, that uh, creates some stability in the way you come across or responsibility as well, but not overly like, uh, you know, you, you're not going to overdo it. You will have this sense of reality as well, where you are able to effectively, effectively manage your person, uh, your personal life, with uh, you know creating stability with your children or with your hobbies or with your creative self-expression. Perhaps even a romance could be in the picture for some of you that can take off around this time. Because, uh, needless to say, on the 17th, Mars and Venus is also uh, going to align in a beautiful trine. So this can suggest that, uh, you know, a love affair is about to spring. And, uh, you know, that could be like a long term, uh, long term uh, soulmate connection. All relationships do benefit from this influence, you know, if whether you have a relationship with your children or whether someone in the entertainment business, because the fifth house is also entertainment and entrepreneurship as well. So something around that, you know, something connecting to your life path, to your children, um, to your appearance, to your, you know, to your love affair, to your hobbies, to your entrepreneurship, something there will create this beautiful sense of reality uh, and that beautiful stability as well uh, or maybe you invest some money this month is very um, financially very active month for you dear Libra uh, especially when we get to the part of the solar eclipse uh, in Scorpio. Uh, you might and you might also end up doing uh, making some long-term investment or investing in property, investing in your creative self-expression, investing in yourself really. Now we ha do have a little bit of problematic, of course, uh, problematic aspect coming up around the 12th of October as well, beside that uh, stability, uh, you know, influence that you are having from Sun, Trine, Saturn. But unfortunately, uh, the negative aspects are going to be lingering around a little bit longer. So Mars is going to form a square aspect while Mars is already from the beginning of uh, October is already forming the square aspect to Neptune. And this is going to be an elongated square aspect. So if you want to know more about the Mars in Gemini aspect in uh, Neptune for an elongated period of time, I, do li I will link to the end of the video my August playlist where you can find the personal as well as the collective interpretation for Mars in Gemini. Um, for now, for you, Mars is in your ninth house, which is the house of uh, being abroad, higher learning, pilgrimage, uh, 
you know, beliefs, publishing, law, teaching, uh, your higher mind, and the house of luck as well. And so Mars is activating with lots of energy. However, during these two months, Mars will slow down, and uh, the aspect to Neptune, it will create some quality of confusion in that regard, uh, some delay, some lethargy, some tiredness as well. You're less likely to be active, although you want to be active because Mars always wants to be active, but something uh, is stopping your action and this will feel a little bit frustrating. Um, Neptune is like a fog where you feel like you have to slow down because you cannot trust your ability to see anymore. You cannot see anymore. So you need to rely more on your instincts. Um, make sure you don't get lost in a journey abroad. Make sure you don't end up losing your goal, your enthusiasm uh, towards your passion, towards your learning. The energy level and the physical vitality will definitely drop and tension may arise, uh, maybe around your neighborhood, maybe around your foreign affairs, foreign people. Try to, um, you know, put everything and give everything and ask everything in writing as well, just to avoid deception, because this could mean deception by words. Um, you might end up being frustrated due to a longer trip or a longer journey abroad or educational or perhaps belief issues as well. Now then you will have a full moon in your seventh house. Uh, this full moon is going to be in Aries. And this is inevitably will bring uh, something with regards to your relationship into a full circle, into a climax point where something will be illuminated and something will need to be end and let go of. Now, this is a very hot-headed, very impatient and very impulsive full moon in Aries because that's just the nature of Aries. And the ruler planet Mars is, I just talked about how, you know, that's a little bit of frustrating and a little bit of a confusing aspect. So what you need to be careful of, just hot-headedly not to say anything to your partner uh, because you can inflict a pain on them uh, because that full moon is very closely conjunct Chiron, which is the wounded healer. And you just want to make sure that, you know, you are not um, ending something that will be very, very painful. And because that full moon has got a sex side to Saturn, that suggests that it could be painful for a long time. So just be very cautious, as I said, just uh, turn inwards a little bit, uh, which is, I know is difficult, especially during tense time, like a full moon, which is an emotional, emotionally heightened time. And just turn inwards and uh, listen to your intuition. Uh, and that will tell you what's the right thing. If something feels not right, don't do it. Now, also the solar eclipse in the sign of Scorpio is going to bring some chaotic events into your um, house of values. And also not only chaotic events, but stressing emotions. A Scorpio is a very emotional sign. And this solar eclipse is connected to the south node of the moon. And so the south node of the moon is always about, you know, letting go. It's the energy of autumn when things naturally die, when we need to excrete, let go close things up and so what makes this solar eclipse a little bit confusing that solar eclipses are usually all about new beginnings however this one is a south node solar eclipse well, this feels to me a little bit like the beginning of an end of an era and uh, we don't really know where we're going we can't see things very very clearly again this neptune mars square aspect also will be uh, stressed by this solar eclipse in the sign of Scorpio. So the universe will be pushing you to your chosen path, however, very rapidly and seemingly out of control. And that's what's scary about uh, the solar eclipses. They feel that they're very fated, very karmic, and you haven't got control over it. But the universe does push you into your chosen path. And however, difficult or less difficult that may be you just have to go with it and you have to trust the universe that you are going in a long term you are going in the right time now this is a solar eclipse in the second house so it um, will be an emotional let go of perhaps a means of earning or a 
personal possession or a financial asset, something very financial, something material will be ending there. And, uh, and with that, you know, a new beginning will occur. Obviously, with every ending, there is a new beginning, but you don't really see that new beginning just yet. What you're going to feel, you perhaps you will feel the pain of letting, uh, letting go uh, a means of earning, a financial income that you were used to having. But the timing of that, it's gone now. So it could be, it, this could also bring like an economic crisis to your, uh, right into your doorstep. Now, this is, however, you have to understand that is a cleansing, excreting effect. So financial development can occur at a later time. But before anything, we need to clear out the old before the new one may be in. And for now, the time is to close an old type of financial um, means, financial income. And so, especially if you have personal planets around the two, three degrees of Scorpio, uh, you will feel this even stronger. So if you have a planet in any of the fixed signs, such as Scorpio or Taurus, uh, but even also Leo and Aquarius, around the two, three degree, give or take two, uh, two or three uh, other degrees, give or take two, three degrees as well, uh, you will feel that really, really strongly. Now, on another level, you may become also aware of the relationship between your near future, which is the second house, to the end, to the distant future as well, which could be, uh, you know, death, and or even beyond. So thank you very much for listening to me, dear Libra. I wish you all the best. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, this will really greatly help my video. Thank you very much for that. And uh, by supporting my channel, by subscribing or commenting or liking, sharing this video, I I'm highly appreciative of any of those. Thank you very much. And I shall see you next month. Bye-bye.